So I've been working on this fun project, which is REST API Server for a forums website. And while working on the code, I ended up with this routes file. Now, ideally, there is nothing wrong about this route file. It has, you know, like multiple routes definition, nothing fancy out here. But something I personally don't like about it is that it does not make sense to me just by looking at the file. So what exactly I mean, let's talk about it. So if you will look over here, uh, what we have is, you know, like uh, we have so many routes and almost all of these routes are trying to bind to a method on the quotient's controller. And if you will look at those routes definition, they are standard RESTful uh, routes definition. Like we want to uh, list all the quotients here. We're trying to create a quotient here. We're trying to show a quotient here. We're trying to update, destroy, and so forth. So what exactly we can do is we can group them inside a resource. Why to create six, seven multiple routes instead of just creating a resource? But the problem with creating a resource is all of these routes have some kind of different expectations or requirements. So when we're trying to create a quotient, we need authentication so that we should know which user has created the quotient. Whereas while listing all the quotients, we don't want anyone to be logged in. Uh, same goes while updating and while deleting a quotient. So what we can do in order to make sure that all of these route definitions are more fluent instead of we are basically dividing them into multiple route definition. So the one way is to group them uh, inside a route group and put all the one which require authentication inside a single group. But the problem is we already have a group out here and Adonis intentionally does not support nested groups. So what does that mean is if we have to group all the authenticated routes, we have to create a new group and copy paste these uh, settings and also put middleware on top of that group, which is not something really nice. So what I did is I went ahead, made some changes to the core to make sure the resources have a fluent API to deal with some real time problems. So let's talk about it. Before we go ahead and before we change uh, all this code out here, we need a way to make sure when we are making changes, we are not breaking anything. Or, in, or even if you're breaking, we are able to come up with the working code at the end, right? And the best way to test that is to write tests. So what I've done is I have wrote some functional tests which are basically outside end tests where a test will try to hit a route and the route will call the controller and the test will try to basically uh, assert on the controller response. So what that means is if any of our functional tests are failing, which means we have something bad into, in our routes file or something not right inside the controller, right? So very first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, npm run test and I'm going to filter down to functional tests. So I'm going to say functional and let's run all of these tests and you can see all the tests are passing right now. So what we're going to do is next, we're going to start modifying our routes file. Very first, I'm going to comment all of these routes out here and rerun my test. And you can see all the tests are failing with a 404 not found, which is expected because we don't have any routes definitions out here. So let's start. Very first, what I believe we need is we need a resource. So I'm going to say route uh, dot resource and the resource will be quotients binding to the quotients controller. So let's go back and rerun the tests. Now you can see some of the tests are failing and some are passing. So 17 of the passing test count and 12 is a failing test count. <clears throat> uh, what does that really mean? If you look at this test, it says should create a quotient with proper slug when user input is valid. And we are expecting a 200 on it, but what we got is a 500 internal server error. 
what they really mean is when we are trying to create a caution, we are expecting a login user. And since there is no login, we are not able to retrieve any user and the relationship between a user and a caution is failing. So if I say middleware auth and rerun the test, uh, you can see we still have some failing tests. Now it says again 17 passing, 12 failing, but nothing has changed. So what's happening? But if you will come here, the earlier failing test would say should create a caution with proper slug is passing now. But instead of that, some other tests are failing. Like this one says, got 401 unauthorized. And it's on a test which is uh, basically should get a 200 when making requests to fetch all cautions. That's fine because in order to fetch all the cautions, a user should not be logged in, right? Like anyone can look at the cautions, but when, but when they want to create one, then they should be logged in. So basically giving middleware auth to the resource is not going to help because it's going to basically validate all the routes which are registered by this resource. So we need a more fluent way. So let's tackle that. But before we basically deal with the middleware, I want to do one more thing. We don't want all the routes to be registered. Since it's a RESTful API server, we don't want routes to output a form like uh, a caution slash create. We don't want that route because that route is supposed to output uh, HTML form. So we, we actually have to filter down the routes that we need from this resource. So I'm going to say only. And we need one for index, which means like all the captions store to create one, show to show a single caption. Uh, update to update cautions and destroy to basically delete a caution. And with middleware, what exactly we can do is we can pass an object here instead of a string. And here we can say which all actions should be authenticated. And what we want is we want to store show, uh, not show, basically update and destroy. So we want someone to be authenticated while creating a caution, while updating and deleting it, okay? So if we go back, rerun our test, oh, we can see some are passing, but still some are failing, but this time the fail count is seven, not 12. So out here on the top, all are passing, this one fails, it says, should return the caution for a given existing slug. And it says 404 out here. So what's exactly going on? When we register a resource, and basically what it's going to do is when we want to fetch one caution, we need to make a request to slash cautions slash ID. But in our case, if I go to cautions controller, cautions controller, yep, out here. Uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find a caution with a slug, not with an ID. Also out here, we are trying to get slug, not the ID. So what we want is we want a, a route to be like this, not like this. So what exactly we're going to do is first we're going to remove the show from the resource out here. And we're going to chain another method called add collection. Now, what is add collection? We'll talk about it. And here, I'm going to say slug to get. So let's talk about add collection for a while. Uh, what add collection really does is it registers a route on top of your resource. So what exactly we are really doing is we are saying slash cautions, which is basically the base URL for this resource. And we are saying slug, right? And it needs to be a get request. And we are basically specifying the verb out here. If you want to specify multiple verbs, you can say you, you can basically pass an array. For a single verb, you can pass a string. That's fine. But another problem is when we don't define which controller action to call, add collection will default to the route name. So what does that really mean is we are trying to say caution slash slug should bind to caution controller 
dot slut, which is not a valid method name, which means we'll have to define a custom uh, action for this route. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass a closure as the third argument, which is going to get back this registered collection, okay? And out here, I'm going to say collection dot um, bind action, which action we want to bind. I'm going to say quotient controller dot show. Let's go back, rerun the test, and let's see what we get. Come back, you can see the fail count is six, not seven, and that particular test is passing. But we still have six more failing tests, which means we want to fix more things. Okay, let's check out what all we have fixed and what all is still pending. So we are able to get all the quotients, remove that. We are able to create a quotient and able to basically authenticate it by defining a middleware auth out here. So we can get rid of that one. Uh, we also have a slug right now. We can get rid of that one. Uh, update, delete, uh, channels is something which does not belong to this resource. Uh, okay, we have two more. So this one says quotients slash ID slash answers. <clears throat> So what exactly we're trying to do here is we're trying to pull all the answers for a given quotient. Now, so many people try to basically uh, listen to or basically try to reply to this route from the answers controller. But I don't find it right because answers controller has nothing to do with that. It's basically a kind of a nested resource within quotients. And I'm quite happy to handle it within the quotients controller. So what we need is we need a way to register this route somehow. So again, let's comment it and say add member this time, not a collection. So what's the basic difference between a member and a collection is when we're trying to create a collection, it will give us a route like caution slash slug. But if I say member and uh, I want answers, what, what it's going to give me is going to say caution slash ID slash answers. So a member is always going to belong to a certain entity of that resource, which means uh, answers will belong to a caution. We are never going to pull all the answers for all the cautions in one go, right? So add member answers, and we want it to be a get route. <clears throat> but the problem is, out here, we are trying to bind it to a method called get answers instead of answers. So uh, as like collection, add member will consider this as a route as well as the controller action if you don't define a, a action that this route should listen to. So in the same fashion, we're gonna um, you know, pass a closure out here, which is going to get the member. I'm gonna say collection dot bind action Question controller that get answers. Okay, that looks good. We can again comment it out. Oh, it needs to be a member here. Let's go back, rerun the test. And okay, this time three are failing, which means we are able to make these three green, but still three more are failing, which means uh, basically this one is failing where we are trying to store an answer for a given quotient. In the same way, I'm going to copy it, paste it here. Uh, this time it needs to be post. And this needs to be post answer. Uh, no, it needs to be save answer. And we can remove this route. We can remove this one also. Go ahead, rerun test. And we still have errors. And we have one more error. This says, should return 200 when valid caution ID is passed. But uh, instead of getting 200, we get a 500 internal server error. So why is that happening? Because when saving uh, an answer, we want a user to be logged in. But out here, we don't have any requirements for someone to be logged in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say middleware auth. It's that simple. So let's come back, rerun all the tests, and now we get everything back to green. Okay, coming back to the routes file. Uh, so this is something we have now instead of multiple routes definition. Uh, let's talk about it. So this time we do have a fluent way 
to define our requirements. So out here, it's quite clear that, you know, like we have a route resource for quotients where we only want four actions and we want to authenticate three of them. Then on top of it, we want a collection with two uh, child members on top of it. So, so it's more fluent, it's more clear, and something which makes more sense, at least to me. And out here at the bottom, we have some different route definitions. Uh, if you want, we can also move uh, these, like the one which are listening to answer controller to a resource, which I'm going to do eventually. But right now, I don't have any code for answers controller. It, th these are like just dummy implementations. So uh, I believe like these are all the changes that we have to make. We can quickly go ahead I'll uh, look at the get status. I'm going to add the routes file and I'm going to do a commit by saying refactor on the routes file and we say uh, use fluent resource and so uh, uh, I believe that's all for now and I'm going to basically push it to GitHub. So git gpr develop. Okay, so we have it on GitHub. Let's go ahead, refresh here, and you can see we have our commit out here. Now, that is really is basically an open source project which I'm writing just for learning purposes. So anyone can refer this project. You can learn from it, you can use it as you know a reference, and if you're interested, you can also contribute to the project. So out here, uh, basically the list of features that I want this project to have. So you can look at the code. Uh, if you want, you can create a PR, we can talk about it. Um, if there are any changes, I'll propose for that. And basically, the backend API will be written uh, in Adonis, and I'll be using Vue.js to create the front end. So in that way, we'll have kind of a modern workflow uh, of API and a modern uh, front end framework. So I believe, guys, that's all from this video. See you guys next time. Goodbye.